welcome to epg patshala my name is uh, n purendra prasad i am working as professor in the department of sociology university of hyderabad today i'll be talking about module 6 social economic and political determinants of health this is part of sociology of health course health actually is determined by the social political and economic factors in fact there is a direct correlation between poverty and ill health why is that so if you look at the third world countries a large part of the poor people are affected with a large number of diseases there is a higher proportion of health risk so what does that mean poverty actually causes ill health ill health in fact you know increases the burden of poverty so it's a vicious cycle both actually feed into each other so is it that the poor people actually get affected with ill health because of their superstition because of non compliance to medical treatment because of uh, you know their uh, you know unhygienic practices no it's not if you look at the way the society actually is providing access to the resources uh the particularly the health services it is always you know provided for the affordable groups and also what causes actually ill health is in terms of their housing their sanitation drainage lack of safe drinking water several factors actually play a very important role in terms of causing ill health in india the major factors that contribute to the the mortality rate particularly two diseases actually contribute to high mortality and morbidity rate one is malaria second one is tuberculosis and both of these tropical diseases have been there for decades our status actually in terms of improving the the situation in health has not changed for decades so there is a kind of a direct kind of a link between the conditions of poverty and that of uh, ill health so if you look at uh, you know uh, um, our neighboring countries for instance if you look at sri lanka their health status actually is much higher compared to india now if you compare it with some countries like cuba which of course is a, a different kind of a social uh, uh, social system which is based on socialist economy okay so where there is collective kind of uh, Uh, um you know responsibility state actually takes the entire responsibility to provide free education and free health so and therefore cuba has higher uh, um, health status but what about sri lanka sri lanka is not a socialist state it's also one of the small island country which is like us a kind of a capitalist economy the way sri lankan uh, um you know healthcare system works with a large support base from the state so it is about you know in terms of what kind of priority how it is actually strategized etc so in trying to actually explain the social political and economic determinants of health um, sheila zubri uh, has written a book called rakus story Raku is a agricultural laboring woman from one of the south indian villages in tamil nadu 
and this this whole book is about you know how an agricultural agricultural laboring population actually suffer from ill health and what kind of livelihood options or what kind of medical services they have how they are able to negotiate etc to be very brief about rakku's story rakku actually uh, you know uh, uh, this this major event is about saving her 11 month old child who was actually suffering from diarrhea and she makes heroic efforts to actually save this child through various mechanism she tries through the local uh, kind of medicine that's available in the shop she tries uh, um, through the temple rituals home remedies herbal kind of a medicine provided by the local healer then she also tries the modern medicine injection medicine from the nearby hospital with all these efforts she was not able to save her 11 month old kid in fact her description of you know going to an urban uh, um, town for healthcare access itself is a long story uh, in the in the late night where transport facilities are actually very minimal um, rakku actually had to go along with the child uh, um, to a nearby town the husband who is also busy with agricultural uh, um, harvesting and other activity was not able to actually uh, uh, you know accompany or uh, uh, take the child a woman actually going from a village to a urban center and negotiating with the medical services and negotiating with the doctors and paramedical staff who actually do not ac- uh, provide accessibility to the to uh, to the poor women is itself a long story that is written in this book the point that we are trying to make here is that you know despite a lot of uh, uh, you know effort to reach out to modern medicine um, the you know children actually are dying women actually are suffering from anemia a lot of poor people actually are suffering from the disease bird okay this is a largely a factor not simply in terms of medical professionals alone here it's no point in trying to say that it is the problem with the medical doctors no medical profession has certain role in terms of the institutional kind of provisioning where they are supposed to actually provide a uh, treatment especially in the primary healthcare center community healthcare center and the district hospitals where it is provided free of cost but that's not the point uh, beyond i mean there are lot of factors which go beyond the medical profession uh, the way you know the economic factors the political factors and the social factors impinge on the health status actually is something that we need to understand if you look at economic conditions okay the 90% of the people who actually do not have you know land or even if they have they are all small and marginal peasants dependent on the land owning classes okay and when you look at the uh, uh, these laboring uh, uh, kind of people okay who are actually conditioned by the the resource uh, availability uh, um, the, because of their low income because of their uh, uh, lack of employment opportunities in the rural areas Uh, and even in urban areas so their uh, lower educational skills all this is actually interlinked to their class position 
Vincent Navarro actually one of the the uh, uh, health uh, kind of an economist and uh, social scientist actually talked about how class plays a very important role in restructuring the the the, the institutions and institutional uh, delivery mechanisms okay so if uh, health resources are available only to a small proportion of the people if huge advancements in medicine and medical profession are not available to to the to the large masses the reason is that it is a, the the class interest of the particular society which is actually trying to siphon off the resources and structure the institutional uh, uh, kind of facilities for their benefit so when you look at the economic structure i think it becomes very clear that the the poor people and the laboring or uh, working class people actually have a greater difficulty in reaching out and uh, accessing the healthcare services and today of course state is providing certain kind of welfare benefits to rajiv arogya sri and other kind of programs but even then the way rajiv arogya sri works only for the benefit of certain surgeries and certain procedures not for all diseases that it's available so the affordability is becomes a very important factor and uh, therefore i think economic factors actually need to be taken into account then when you look at the social factors the caste religion the the patronage system the way you know the entire uh, kind of social organization where the norms values taboos in each society actually work is that the lower classes uh, particularly the the marginalized sections the lower caste and the women actually face lot more problems in terms of accessing the health services so in order to actually move out of uh, their own social context and assert in themselves and uh, be able to access the services is something that's a huge kind of a hurdle and uh, uh, the way you know uh, the money lenders operate for instance in terms of uh, lending money at a very high interest rate it is again you know in terms of certain social factors because the the way the lower classes actually require large uh, kind of uh, um, you know uh, help um, this is again you know provided only by the money lenders for certain social groups compared to other social groups so the banks and other institutions are not accessible and that becomes a very important kind of a thing for uh, other groups to access similarly the political factors okay uh, it's largely the power that actually restructures the social relations okay so uh, what debavar benerji and other kind of uh, social scientists argued that uh, the inequalities in the society are largely you know conditioned by the political kind of uh, uh, decision making processes why is it that doctors actually and uh, a large part of institutional resources are available to elite and upper classes while the lower classes actually are devoid of lot of the support mechanism it is again to do with the political organization of the society in fact mark nickter in his study in karnataka clearly indicates that nurse actually becomes a memsa who does not want to actually visit the lower class and lower caste households and lower padas primarily because it is something that it is uh, you know touching the lower class and caste people actually is impure and also they do not actually get much benefits from these lower classes so it is actually the the conditioning of these things are all politically restructured so this is the dimension that you know shila zubrig actually brings out brilliantly through narration of uh, this uh, agricultural laboring uh, women uh, called raku and in this uh, book actually she narrates 
all these determinants the social the economic and the political kind of factors that impinge okay and sociologists have been actually uh, talking about it's important to understand the society why do why are sociologists interested in actually uh, explaining or understanding sickness this is primarily because it helps you to understand the social organization it understand how resources are uh, actually managed uh, distributed utilized in each society okay so the the way medicine health and society is interlinked is in terms of actually uh, the larger social political and economic forces so what are the reasons underlying ill health okay in this case is it that you know raku was not able to actually take her child to the hospital on time is that the reason why the child died is it because she actually has approached the traditional healers the medicine men in uh, in the village or in terms of accessing the uh, uh, the local medicine is the traditional kind of a healing system which is actually an obstacle uh, why do the primary health care centers in the village is actually closed down by 12 noon why is it that uh, a lot of these doctors actually uh, um, do not stay in the hospitals for uh, the whole day and provide uh, services as mandated by the government okay a lot of these questions actually uh, require you know a deeper analysis it's not about you know some doctors not at, not uh, uh, staying in the primary health centers not discharging their duties or these agricultural women actually not able to reach i think there are these are all interlinked factors okay uh, when you look at the way you know uh, uh, if you look at the medical professionals and their, uh, their their reasons why they are not able to uh, discharge their responsibilities it probably is to do with the the kind of uh, uh, you know reward structure that uh, they have compared to their own colleagues in the urban um, uh, centers it is to do with lack of uh, you know motivation and the resources that they ask from the state uh, it is also to do with the medical equipment that is required for them you know it's also to do with their elite status So there are number of factors why doctors do not actually you know provide uh, the mandated services similarly why is it that raku kind of women are not able to actually reach out to the uh, uh, you know government uh, kind of healthcare services which is provided free of cost it is to do with you know the patriarchy the way women status actually which is low and the agricultural laboring population which is tied up in terms of their own kind of work where they do not have enough uh, resources uh, for them to immediately travel a uh, long distances to take them to a district hospital lot of these factors are actually responsible so it's not to you know blame one against the other but there are lot of political and structural conditions that actually need to be altered okay so what is happening in terms of last 6 decades because it's not simply now you know if you look at the healthcare system right from the beginning okay uh, starting from the early stages where uh, the phcs and chcs and district hospitals were established a lot of manpower was provided anganwadi workers community health workers were provided and later on i think the shift to family planning program there was a huge kind of resource diversion and in terms of health services actually targets uh, uh, were all towards family planning so during emergency the way family planning actually became very significant kind of a healthcare program and later on with lot of resistance that you know uh, um, the forcible sterilization actually stopped while it may be a temporary phenomena uh, um, that 
it was not actually enforced uh, you know um, in that manner but even today you have you know indirectly a lot of enforcement that is happening in terms of taking um, um, these women to the sterilization centers because the health workers actually are given some incentives the people who undergo operations are given some incentive these are all temporary and ad hoc mechanisms through which you know uh, uh, the healthcare programs are uh, designed what is required in a country like india is that you know strengthening of the healthcare system at all levels including the referral system interlinking of these uh, 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 primary health center to that of district and state hospitals and providing resources apart from it the the possibility of actually providing you know better housing the safe drinking water and also the employment opportunities for the people unless the structural conditions of people actually are transformed the possibility of these people actually gaining access to healthcare services is not possible so medical actually uh, um, services and medical profession can effectively operate in a social and political environment which can actually provide you know this kind of a link in terms of improving their social and economic resources as well so this is where i think sociology of health actually uh, um, talks about how significant it is to understand the 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 entire social conditions in a comprehensive manner in fact uh, michael foucault actually says that you know the growth of hospitals indicates the sickness of the society if there is more and more of hospitals and you know the 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 tertiary care services which are available in urban centers which is indicated as the health kind of uh, uh, progress it's not you know it is only indicates that certain kind of commercial interest invested interests were able to actually you know uh, um, invest and you know uh, harvest based on the misery of the people so the equitable kind of a distribution of resources is important and the inequality that is actually uh, uh, playing an important role between different classes of people need to be addressed and those societies which have less and uh, um, lesser inequalities among different classes of people actually are the ones which are healthy kind of societies so there is a direct correlation between health status and that of inequality and this is where i think i wanted to look at um, you know how social economic and political forces play a very important role and i'm sure i think you will be able to gain lot more if you read this rakku story which is very interesting it's which is written in a very lucid manner uh, shula shila zubrig actually was an activist who uh, observed and ac actually written uh, um, you know a narrative of uh, the poor people in tamil nadu i think you need all of you need to read this book and then you know connect uh, it with the with the module that is actually provided here please also see the further readings that are given at the end of this module thank you